Hey guys and welcome back to the channel, I'm Zemo the Dad in DPS and we're back again with another video. But before we get into the details, let's thank our YouTube members. Those are Twice Picks Buds, Goldie, Wyatt Blackburn, Wallers, Me, David Smith, Dio Fane Gaming, Fat Headed Druid, Colin G, Gary McKnight and Chris K. Now Gary McKnight and Chris K um, unfortunately didn't manage to get onto the last video when they were definitely members before then. So big thanks to them and for their patience. Now, if you do enjoy my videos, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and to support us more and become a member, click the join button below. So today's video is one that I have created via past experience and a little bit of screwing around, and that is 8 tips for starting a new character and leveling it. Now this makes it great for new and old players alike, because let's be honest, we all discover new crap all the time that we previously had no clue about. So, let's get on with this video. So, number one. Builds don't matter. Now this is only true for starting and levelling the character to a point. I'd always advise you have a, some idea of what you want to do with any particular character. But when it comes from levelling 1 to 50, having a specifically defined build means very little. Now don't get me wrong, certain stats will make the process easier, but the reality is, with the punch card machine, none of your special stats are set in stone, therefore don't give a crap about a build at the start of the game. Just do what you want, and do what works best for you. And there's some things that make it easier, don't get me wrong. Number 2. Make or join a party. Now, even if you don't intend to play with others, always, always be in a party. The benefits of being teamed up far outweigh the negatives. Now, if you're also in the right groups, you gain additional XP for certain actions or gain just an overall boost to XP. Casual teams, for example, boost intelligence. And once you're attuned to your teammates, that basically boosts your XP. Intelligence boosts XP. Number three, stack intelligence and XP buffs. Now, as I said just there, the higher your intelligence, special stat, the more XP you're going to gain. So maxing out your intelligence early on is definitely a must for leveling any new character. And, as I said with the first section, builds don't matter, the punch card machine lets you move your stats around, so stacking intelligence at the start of the game will not affect your long term build. So dump a load of stats into intelligence. Now outside that factor there are various buffs that I would advise you acquire. First off, sleeping. That boosts your XP by 5%, so anytime the buff wears off, head back to your camp and catch some Zs. Next we have food buffs. Now there are various food types in game that can boost XP or stats. The easiest to acquire at the start is from the event Feed the People. Once complete, you obtain canned meat stew and if you have the carnivore mutation this then doubles that effect, though that is harder to do early on in the game. And the last tip in this section is that you should get the perk Inspirational. It's in the Charisma tree, it gets maxed out at rank 3 for a grand total of 15% XP when in a party. Which then goes back to the last thing, always be in a damn party. And it's usually one of the first, if not the first perks I acquire, so yeah, do it, get it, level your character with it. Now, melee is your friend. Low level characters, as I said, don't need to have a defined build, and if you're new to the game, one of your biggest problems are resources and ammo, and they are pretty scarce at the start of Fallout 76, so melee is definitely a great method in order to get through the game. And for the first 50 or so levels, it just makes it so much easier because you're not using ammo, and you're not really using much in terms of repair costs and whatnot. Um, on top of that, melee weapons will take out the majority of enemies of similar levels um, in a couple of hits, sometimes even one hit. It depends on if you've been stacking melee perks and all that kind of thing, but realistically, melee weapons early on are fantastic. They're very good later on if you're using the right build as well, but early on you can get by 
with very little effort and very little resources. On top of that, ghouls are my preferred fodder in this scenario because they have no armor whatsoever in comparison to some enemies so you can kill them a lot easier and some of the best locations for leveling are where ghouls are at now the three best locations i use are white springs lewisburg and the charleston capitol building go there kill them reap the rewards Number five is events. Now, obviously, events are amazing for leveling. There's usually a bunch of enemies, and the rewards like stim packs, ammos, and legendaries certainly help. But all of these things aren't 100% guaranteed. But there are a few events early on that make life that little bit easier. Now, the primary event that I like to talk about in the start of the game is Leader of the Pack. This is a great event early on for getting legendary gear, and it's one of the most active events I see in most servers. The reason for this is the event spawns free, single star enemies, and that is in the form of legendary wolves. Now, you track these down, kill them, complete the event. Now, higher levels will normally ignore this event for obvious reasons, but it is a great way for you to get a head start with gear department on a new character, especially if you can find a decent effect on melee weapons. Vampire, for example. Next up is Path to Enlightenment. Now, in this event, you gather um, some bioluminescent fluid from enemies that you kill around the lighthouse. You then deliver them to the top of the lighthouse, and eventually, once you've completed the event, a Mothman spawns and will give you a 5% XP buff for about an hour. So definitely do this every time you see it pop. It's just gonna give you a general XP buff. There's not really much else to say. Now this next event you're all familiar with, Radiation Rumble. No matter what level you are, this is the best event for XP. And if this becomes active, head on over. And your mission as a low level is not to kill anything, but get a hit on anything you see. You'll get a ton of XP and definitely a few levels. Even past level 50, you can get around three levels. Again, it depends on how high you are, but yeah, definitely the best event for XP. Bring along something that can hit multiple targets at the one time if you can. The next event is Guided Meditation. As with Radiation Rumble, this event spawns a ton of ghouls and once again, tag every enemy you see in order to maximise your XP. You also need to protect the, the points um, and repair them when they get destroyed, so yeah, keep that in mind. This also drops things like Scout Masks, so, you know, do it for that reason alone as well. Line in the Sand is the final event I talk about here. It's great for the same reasons that Radiation Rumble and Guided Meditation are. This time though, instead of ghouls, it's Scorched. You take on several waves of them, tag anything and everything you see, hit the Scorch Beast that flies over our head, you know, there's loads of different things going on. Just hit every enemy you can to get the most XP out of it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is. One final thing about events, now this isn't exactly exclusive to events, but often at the start of these specific events that give huge amounts of XP due to the amount of mobs, you'll see players huddled together. And typically they start using lunch boxes. This is gonna boost your XP by a chunk, so hang around these buggers if possible. Tip six, script early. If you're doing all these events that I've listed, you're going to acquire a good amount of legendaries and, as a result, script everything and anything you're not using. They are low-level items, they will have very little value long-term, and if you hit the script limit before you hit level 50, trade them in to Murgaburger the Purveyor over at the Rusty Pick for legendary modules. I wouldn't advise buying weapons or armor from her until you're at least level 50, otherwise you're not really going to get anything back that's worth anything. Next up is number 7, Legendary Effects. So, as I said, script everything you're not using. However, in some cases you might be better off keeping a certain legendary, even if it's much lower than your current most damaging item. Now these cases would be Vampire as the main effect, or a gun with explosive as its secondary effect. Now Vampire is 
obviously going to make a massive difference. If you have it on the right weapon, you are going to be able to regenerate much more health than you're losing, and that means less stim packs used, and in general it means you're going to last longer in a fight. Don't get me wrong, however, because you'd potentially in some cases be using ammo, unless it's a melee weapon, it can run down your ammo stock, so you need to be aware of that. But Vampire is still worth keeping no matter what, unless you've got a much better one, of course. So, Explosive. If you don't know already, creates an explosive effect, you shoot a bullet, explodes. Um, this is really good for all the events that I was listing because obviously it's going to make you able to tag enemies all that easier. If you fire into a group, you've now hit everything in that group. Therefore, even if you've got a crappy explosive weapon with really bad main effect, low level it doesn't matter. You're still going to be hitting more enemies and during these events that means more XP. So definitely keep an explosive weapon if you find one or whatnot. At low level it is definitely going to make your life easier at these events. Obviously, outside the event, don't use it, you're probably going to end up getting yourself killed using it. But yeah, bring it to the events where everybody's going to be destroying enemies super quick and you don't need to worry about that. Now, our final tip, number eight, is daily ops. Now, if you've not heard me talk about daily ops before, you've obviously not watched my videos, but it's a great source for resources such as ammo and stim packs. You go in there, typically, in most weapons, you will come out with more ammo and more stim packs than you went in with. So definitely doing it as a low level is a great way to get these kind of things because they're a lot harder to come across. Uh, when you're lower level. On top of that, once you complete the daily up, you're going to get plans and legendaries. Now keep in mind pre-level 50 characters will not obtain daily up exclusive plans or rewards, but instead I kind of generalise ones, which in some ways does in fact help you get that character where it needs to be because you're getting the plans to do all the things you need to do. But once you hit level 50, you're going to get some valuable plans, you're going to get caps, script, there's all manner of things that you get out of daily ops, and lower levels are going to benefit greatly. So definitely do daily ops, even as low levels, because most of the time you're going to be fine. Um, decryption, you're going to get your ass kicked, well actually maybe not in some cases, but on the uh, regular mode, you're a body and sitting at the point, you know, you, the timer's going to tick up faster because you're there. People won't care. I typically don't unless they're not doing anything and just sitting at the door. So that's today's video guys. If you enjoyed it don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and if you'd like to support the channel more click the join link down below to become a YouTube member and hopefully this pretty much helped out anybody that's either new to the game or wanting to level a new character as that's kind of the whole point of my videos to help people out or to entertain so if you did get something out of it yeah great don't forget to leave a comment share the video um, and we will catch you all next time in the wasteland